who was a singer. Later on, Mildred traveled the world and performed as an opera singer under the stage name Gina Brooke. And if this was her, it's nice to think that one of her earliest performances was on the stage at Fresh Creamery on August 15th, 1900. There was a twist to her life uh, as after her music career, she married Jack Somerville, nephew of Edith Somerville of Somerville and Ross Fee. And they are both interred in Castle Townsend Churchyard in Cork. Mildred actually lived to celebrate her 101st birthday. The next recorded concert in the parish took place on Saturday and Sunday, the 15th and 16th of August, 1903. So a concert around the August the church holiday was obviously a standard practice at that time. This concert was run in aid of the new sacristy, just completed and equipped. A 1907 concert in Chicassons reveals that one of the singers was Mr. J. Rochford. In fact, the connection goes back three months earlier than that to the very first variety concert presented by St. Clement's players on the stage of CYMS on New Year's night, 1945. <coughs> Members of the Fortune family from Kilkenny Street contributed handsomely to that night's entertainment. Theresa and Carol were performed Irish dancing, John had a role in a sketch, Kelly the boy from Killan, and his brother Eddie played the patient in a one-act comedy. St. Lactus CYMS Dramatic Class spent the autumn and early winter evenings of 1945 preparing for their first Christmas concert, which consisted uh, of their first attempt at a three-act play, The Able Dealer, a farcical comedy, also supported by a full variety program. With program from that concert on the slide, St. Stephen's Night, 1945. And the uh, centrefold of the program, outlining the cast, Thomas Kennedy, James Cal, Miss Mary Hennessy, <coughs> Miss Lynn Marr, uh, Miss Annie Malloy, John J. Murphy, Matthew Walsh, and John Bergen. She came to an uproarious hall and then pronounced in solemn tones, the prisoner finds the jury guilty. Two major developments, and I think it's appropriate Finished the words of Irish, Shannon, Bresham and Lucas, Trihula and Quit, and a wish. Fall seal starcher, leave Golair. May all of you have a long and prosperous life on stage. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks to Nate. That was a brilliant talk. Um, I'm sure you'll all agree. It was very insightful as to what happened over those years and it went back so far. Uh, the male chorus was a significant part of Fresh for Pantomime over the generations, with many of the songs written by locals. We are delighted to welcome some of those members of the male chorus Donald Heavey, Michael Rafter, Mick Cass, and Paddy Butler. And uh, they're going to sing a couple of songs. And they're accompanied by no clear on a card. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> looking at them signs there, I feel like 101 here tonight. <laughs> but looking down here tonight, it's fantastic to see so many people who took part in the pantomimes and concerts down to the years. I have to thank very especially here tonight Myra Marr, and Myra put us all on the stage at a young age, and Tom Morgan as well. So we're just going to see the men's chorus, unfortunately, is getting very small. <laughs> it was a fantastic chorus years ago. So now we're down to the three stooges here. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> it's grand that we're able to say, we might be able to think of the songs, I don't know. But we do our best anyhow. We're going to sing two songs for you tonight. <coughs> I might be able to sing. The Pot Was by the Boat it was written by the late Tom Waldron and of course sung by the great Larry Dawson. And um, we think of Larry and Tom and all these people here tonight. 
And unfortunately, the names that were mentioned in these songs are no longer with us. And it's fantastic to see here tonight, Jim Delaney, one of the greatest characters that ever was. Eamon Dunn, Larry Hamilton, who did the painting, the pantomimes. There's a lot down there. You're all, it's great to see you all here tonight. You'd never think you won't put a stage. <laughs> when we were singing in the audience in Freshford, you never had a microphone. You were always told to hit the back wall with everything you got. Isn't that right, Reza? Remember that? <laughs> right the other way you go. <clears throat>